These photos may be out of this world, but they're being analyzed by astronomers right at Arizona State University. Jennifer Patience and students at ASU may be 5,000 miles away from their telescope in Chile, but they and other astronomers around the world are studying and discovering new information about the universe every day. They're able to analyze new stars, planets, and solar systems through international teamwork, a giant 26-foot lens telescope, and cutting-edge technology called the Gemini Planet Imager. So it's a, it's a really exciting time to be able to search for systems that are somewhat more like our own solar system. Previous exoplanets have been, uh, searches have concentrated on giant planets that are very close to their host star, but with the Gemini Planet Imager, we'll be able to search for the um, outer regions of giant planets. The Earth's atmosphere is important for life on Earth. We wouldn't be able to survive without it. But it makes an astronomer's job a little difficult. The movement of the air and different temperatures in the atmosphere prevent regular telescopes from getting a good look at stars. But new technology called adaptive optics can correct for differences in the atmosphere and make images that are almost as clear as ones from space. Images from space come in through the telescope but are disrupted by differences in the Earth's atmosphere. The Gemini Planet Imager senses these problems and sends a signal to a special mirror to correct them. And it's a very small mirror. It's only the size of a coin, but on it are a, a series of pistons behind the mirror, which then push and pull to make it change shape and counteract the effects of the Earth's atmospheres. Some stars are so bright that it's difficult for astronomers to be able to see smaller, less bright planets orbiting next to it. But with Gemini imaging technology, astronomers are able to cancel out the light of the bright sun so that the planets are easily seen. The science behind astronomy doesn't just take place at the telescope. Most of the work is done back in labs and universities where astronomers and students analyze the data. That's when we start to make our real discoveries. It's uh, not so common to be able to see the faintest objects that you're after right at the telescope itself. Uh, it often takes quite a bit of analysis back at the observatory. And then it's that combination of work on site and uh, at the university that leads to these sort of discoveries. Um, Gemini kind of looks at very specific um, fractions of the electromagnetic spectrum, but I look at lots of um, complementary wavelengths to, um, to kind of add pieces of the puzzle to work out what's going on in these systems. It may be surprising to learn that you don't have to study astronomy to become an astronomer. There are a number of majors that are related to astronomy. Some of the students study physics, sometimes astronomy itself, sometimes engineering. However, math and science classes are a necessity for being a good astronomer. That and a healthy curiosity of space. Like Kimberly, who read all the space and science magazines she could find when she was little. If you're interested in astronomy and you want to learn more, there's just so, there's so many resources out there and there's so many new and exciting astro astronomical discoveries that are being made publicly available more easily today. It provides a very important piece of the puzzle of understanding uh, what sort of solar systems are out there around other stars and it enables us to search for systems more like our own and, and that's uh, I think a really exciting prospect. Now astronomers around the world and at ASU can find never before seen stars, planets and solar systems just by looking up at the sky. For No 99, this is Sammy Davis.